I've been so happy with that combination red and white light up forward in the V-berth, I decided to add another one back here in the main salon area over the chart table. So we've pulled the overhead down. This is the uh, backing plate that the uh, light fixture itself is actually attached to, and obviously this is some of the 12 volt wiring. So what we'll be doing here is uh, tapping into the wiring right about here and uh, carrying a new piece of wire all the way back aft here, and we'll be putting another dome light right here. But what we're going to do is go with a smaller diameter dome. This is, uh, I think they call this a 5 inch, but uh, it's a smaller diameter, but it is the combination red and white. One nice thing about tapping into wiring like this are these three-way connectors, which allows me to simply snip that wire in half, strip the ends, crimp everything together, and then connect my new wire. It takes two of them. you got to buy one for positive, one for negative, but they're real handy to have when you're doing this kind of wiring where you're adding a little something to an existing circuit, and you don't, for whatever reason, want to be putting a, a bus bar up there. And I could certainly put a bus bar in, but there's really no advantage to it, and the thickness of the bus bar might be a little bit too much underneath the panels here, so tapping in is uh, by far the easiest way to do this. I was away from this project for a couple of weeks over Christmas and New Year's. While I was away, I had time to think about things, and the project experienced scope creep. Well, this project, like most of them on the boat, is experiencing a little bit of uh, what I like to refer to as scope creep. Uh, I mentioned how I was looking forward to putting another light here, and we've glassed in the backing plate, and uh, I've started to do a, a small cut through this backing piece here so that I can run the wire smoothly. However, I also mentioned about how I love using these little three-way wire connectors for simple things like this, where I can just drop it into the existing wires. However, as I said, we're experiencing scope creep. I've also decided that I want to mount another fan on the cabin side here above the galley area. I've fabricated a backing plate, which is going to mount on the side of the cabin here. The fan will attach to it, but I'm going to need to run 12-volt wiring to it. So, instead of uh, using a three-way connector to wire in the light, I am now going to be installing a proper bus. So, I'll be taking my uh, handy-dandy little Dremel, cutting a little groove in this backing piece. This is what the uh, battens that hold the ceiling up are attached to. Cutting a little groove in here so that we can run the electrical wire smoothly. Okay, well, I've got the new wire pulled into place and secured to the overhead, bringing it back to uh, right in here somewhere where we're going to uh, now attach our uh, bus bar. Making the change uh, from these three-way connectors to a bus bar was definitely not a cost-saving measure. These little connectors are, uh, if I remember correctly, uh, two and a half, three bucks a piece. This bus bar was uh, seventeen dollars. But it uh, it is the correct way to do things and it's the way we've done all the other wiring on the boat so might as well stick with it. I mean it's just another boat dollar, right? Installation of the bus bar is pretty straightforward. I attached it to the overhead, cut my wires to the appropriate lengths, and uh, crimped on the appropriate connectors onto the ends of the wires, and then attached everything to the bus bar. All right, I've got the wire pulled to the new backing plate where we're going to uh, be mounting this uh, red and white light right here over the nav station. And uh, we've come forward here and we've tapped into the existing wiring, added a bus bar there, and uh, we're pretty much ready to go. We can put the uh, the ceiling back up and the uh, the lights back in place. Uh, something that probably goes without saying, 
but I'll say it. Uh, if you have trim pieces that you're taking down, it's a good idea to mark where they came from and what direction they were facing so that when you go to reinstall them, it's a little bit simpler and uh, less of a puzzle. Uh, I've put the panel back in place. I've got a piece of trim that needs to go up here and uh, then we can go ahead and uh, install the light. Well, this final piece of uh, teak trim goes right up along the edge of the companionway here and uh, filled in with uh, four little screws. All right, that trim is in. All that's left now is to uh, connect our light. And a quick test. Look at that red and white light. Well, we'll just tuck these wires up into place. That's why we uh, left that cutout in the center of the backing board. And of course we want to make sure we turn this the right way so the switch is uh, where we can get at it. And get a screw in there. All right, so there it is, another project completed. We've got this uh, red and white dome light that uh, I've just installed above the uh, quarter berth and chart table area. The thinking on this is that as one comes down the companionway, it's a simple matter to reach in and turn the light on. This light is a combination. It's uh, red on one side and white on the other. The other lights that we've got on the overhead are just white and white, uh, meaning that uh, they're white on one side and slightly less bright on the other, which saves a little bit of the uh, amperage draw. Although right at the moment, I have got uh, one, two, three, four, four LED lights running on the boat right now in their full br brightest position, and I am drawing just a little less than uh, two amps. Well, unfortunately, it's broad daylight right now, as you can probably see through the port, but uh, you get the effect that the uh, red light will have. It'll be very handy uh, coming down below after dark, uh, off watch, uh, just to help maintain uh, night vision. As boat projects go, this one was relatively inexpensive at only about $100.